Already dominant in their home market, Chinese EV makers aim to lead as well in the self-driving realm, from advanced robo-taxis to larger semi-autonomous semis. The game for autonomy is in China. That's why Elon wants to roll out his own FSD there. Tesla, along with his Chinese navigation partner Baidu, plan to make FSD or full self-driving available in China by as early as early next year, pending final regulatory approval after getting an in principle okay from Beijing in April. It's a watershed moment. And this unlocks a golden opportunity. At least nine domestic Chinese automakers, plus smartphone giants Xiaomi and Huawei, among others, have a head start though locally through real-world traffic pilot zones in multiple cities across China, seeking a leg up in so-called ground truth data. At the moment, the local knowledge gives them the advantage because, again, the scale. The scale is uncompared to anywhere else in the world. But as Tesla leans on that scale, as you mentioned with the Baidu cooperation, that is slowly going to be eaten away over time. And unless they can also do uh, that kind of data gathering outside of the country, Tesla will at some point not only become competitive, but may ultimately become a market leader. I think Tesla's full self-driving is great. I like it too. But FSD's breakthrough only took place in the past 12 months. I think Xpeng's XNGP and Tesla's FSD can both perform well in the global market. Tesla is indeed a pioneer, but everyone is beginning to get closer. Chinese car companies have a better understanding of the needs of Chinese users and the needs of China's road conditions. This is a, a pretty uh, you know, narrow road. Right. Uh, you can see all kinds of different scenarios like bicycles, pedestrians, vehicles cutting in, cutting out. Toyota partner Pony AI has been real-world road testing its robo-taxis for more than six years. So we hailed a ride in Beijing. Tesla's FSD coming into this market, is it a threat? It's definitely a good thing. More competitive this market is, it means the better products will be offered to the customers. We need to have the customer acceptance. That is very, very important. The customers have to trust this kind of technology. Oh, whoa, whoa, what happened? Somebody pulled out uh, suddenly. Oh, the, the brakes work. Safety and certainty are clearly important as well for another electric vehicle industry in China in the so-called low-altitude economy that includes airborne EV delivery of packages and passengers. Yihong is perhaps the most well-known of the Chinese air taxi makers, but Volant Aerotech 2 hopes to have its 2.5 million US dollar BE25 certified by mid-2026 as China opens its lower airspace to piloted and pilotless EV tolls or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. There's a huge potential in this area. Electric vertical takeoff and landing commercial drones come in many shapes and sizes, and they are throwing lots of money at it. So much so that at least 20 provinces say they intend to build out their own low altitude economies. The vehicle itself is carbon fiber, and it's generally produced all domestically. The battery ecosystems which they use are here. So all of the ecosystems and manufacturing is already located domestically. So that actually gives it a huge edge over any competitors. Now is a uh, little bit challenging time between China, Europe, and the States. I think it's uh, important to have the communication and uh, not afraid of everything. We are trying to build this, this aircraft for, for the world. The next real test for autonomy, both in the skies and on the roads, it's all down, will be to see whether customers are afraid or not to get on board. Stephen Engel, Bloomberg News, Beijing.